Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. I often get asked how to add new elements into a shot, be that simple 3D text or strange and scary alien creatures. These types of effects are usually achieved by means of 3D integration. To create a 3D integration effect, you first need to track the movement of your camera in your shot. You then export this tracking data into a dedicated 3D program such as 3ds Max, Maya or Cinema 4D and then create whatever objects or creatures you want inside that 3D program. Finally, you render out your 3D elements and then composite them back onto your original shot to complete this effect. This can be a very lengthy and complicated process and I actually have a six part tutorial series on my channel already that tries to explain this process from start to finish. If you own Adobe After Effects CC, you actually have access to a plugin that can make this entire process a whole lot easier and that is the Cineware plugin. The Cineware plugin allows you to create and use Cinema 4D layers directly inside of Adobe After Effects and it makes it very easy to link your camera from Cinema 4D directly with your motion track camera in your composition. After Effects CC also includes a free version of Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D Lite and so the Cineware plugin is probably your cheapest and easiest option to start creating these cool 3D integration effects. In this video I'm going to cover the basics of how to use the Cinema plugin but this is still going to be an intermediate tutorial. For one I will assume that you are pretty comfortable using Adobe After Effects and I will also assume that you have already watched and understood my video on how to use the 3D camera tracker but enough of me talking let's jump right into the tutorial. Here we are in Adobe After Effects and I have a very short clip here of me walking through a small reserve. We are going to track the movement of the camera throughout the shot and we are then going to add a 3D element into the middle of the reserve using the Cineware plugin. For that the very first thing we obviously need to do is we need to track the shot and for that we are going to use the inbuilt 3D camera tracker. So search for and apply the 3D camera tracker to the footage layer. For this particular shot I'm actually going to leave everything on the default settings. I've tried this before, I know this will track ok. Obviously if you have a different piece of footage that you filmed yourself you may have to tweak some of these settings. Let the 3D camera tracker do its thing, go away, have a coffee and come back once it's done. Nice, tracking is complete and we have a number of track points in our scene. Let me make the track points just a little bit bigger so they're a little easier to see for you. Now if you scrub through our footage, yeah that actually looks alright. Even at the beginning of the shot here where I'm kind of you know having the camera aim downwards at the ground, tracking seems to be alright. So now let's try out how well this tracking worked and add a solid right into the middle of the park where we want to add the 3D object. One important thing to keep in mind is that the 3D camera tracker does not actually know which direction is up in your scene. Everything might be tracked correctly but the whole thing might be upside down or on the side. As long as all the track points follow the features in your shot, the 3D camera tracker doesn't really care. But because we want to obviously work in the space that matches our shot and we want to add a 3D element on the ground plane in the middle of this reserve, we need to tell the 3D camera tracker what our ground plane is. So let's scrub forward a little bit until we're fairly close to the ground to where we want the 3D object to appear. Select three track points in a triangle shape to define the plane of the ground within your scene and then right click onto the target icon that appears and select set ground plane and origin. Now nothing will actually change, this just internally tells the 3D camera tracker that this is our ground plane so this direction here is up which will match our scene. Now again right click onto the target icon and this time we are going to create a solid and a camera. Cool there's our little solid, let's scrub through the scene and that actually looks pretty good. The solid is nicely tracked into our scene right where we want to create the 3D object. Let's reselect the 3D camera track effect so we can see all of the track points and let's also create a null object to mark this tree stump here just to show you that we can get more information out of the scene into Cinema 4D. So select any of the track points on this tree stump, right click it and just say create null. Now this null I'm actually going to rename into tree stump null and all it is is just a little track point on the tree stump in our scene to identify where the tree stump is. Now we're ready to export our tracking data into Cinema 4D and because the Cineware plugin is actually integrated into After Effects since After Effects CC, After Effects makes this process really easy. All we have to do is select all of the elements in our shot that we want to export which is the camera tracker, the solid we've placed, 
and the tree stump null object and then go to file export and select the Maxon Cinema 4D exporter. Select the location where you want to save your new Cinema 4D file, give it a useful name and then hit save. Now nothing has actually happened but After Effects has actually exported this scene data into a new Cinema 4D file. The next thing we need to do is we need to import that file. So go back to the project panel and let's import this newly created Cinema 4D file into our project. Here's my new Cinema 4D file and let's drag it into our composition. Let's drag it at the very top, it doesn't really matter too much and drop it in. Cool, here's our Cinema 4D layer and you can actually see a wireframe mesh that defines the ground plane in our Cinema 4D scene. And as we scrub through this composition, this ground plane should nicely line up with the ground in our actual footage. Now let's finally create an actual 3D object that we can place in our scene. With the Cinema 4D layer selected in your composition, go to Edit and then select Edit Original. This is going to launch Cinema 4D Lite which comes included with After Effects CC. Now, while it looks like there's nothing in the scene, if you scrub through this project... Ah, here's the tracking solid that we've placed in our scene and here's even the null object that we've attached to the tree stump. In our scene browser you will also find all of the elements that we've exported from After Effects. So you find a 3D camera tracker, which is the camera you're viewing your current scene through. And this little icon here, this little target icon actually indicates that the camera is currently active. The tracking solid itself and the tree stump null. It even picked up the name so it's really useful to add a whole bunch of null objects into your scene in Adobe After Effects and then when you export them to Cinema 4D you can easily identify where all the elements in your scene actually are. Before we start messing around in Cinema 4D let me quickly pop open the render settings and I'm actually going to decrease the width and height to half HD which is 960 by 540 simply to make rendering a little bit quicker. Let's close the render settings again. Now let's create a very simple 3D object. So go into your object menu and simply create a new cube. Let's move this shape up a little bit. Let me make it a little bigger as well. And again, let's move it up just to make sure it's above the ground. And now if we save this project, um, this pop-up I can actually ignore. This is just happening because I very recently upgraded to After Effects CC 2015. So say yes, save that scene and jump back into After Effects. There's our 3D object, which we've just added into our scene. And as I scrub through this, you can actually see that I'm seeing this cube placed into the 3D space of my scene. Now, while this cube is not particularly fascinating, just think of the possibilities. You can technically create and animate any 3D objects in Cinema 4D and with the Cineware plugin, include them directly in your After Effects composition to very easily composite them into your shot. Obviously, the more complex the 3D objects are that you have in your Cinema 4D scene, the slower the preview rendering will be in Adobe After Effects. One thing that can help you speed up the previewing in Adobe After Effects is in the Cineware effect, under Render Settings you have a Renderer option. Right now this is set to Software, which is the fastest option, but it is also the lowest quality. You can also set this to Standard Draft. This already looks a little bit better and the wireframe for the ground has disappeared. Um, obviously, rendering will get a little bit slower. And finally, you can also set this onto the final render, which is the final render quality that you would get if you rendered this out in Cinema 4D directly. Um, obviously, this is now really nice and smooth and anti-aliased and this is going to render anything like shadows and other additional effects that you add in Cinema 4D as well. But obviously, rendering now has gotten quite a bit slower. Um, so it's a little bit of a balance. Personally, I like to work in software or draft for most of the time. And only once I'm really happy with the final composite will I switch this over to final. Now one exciting thing about the Cineware plugin is that it actually links the camera from Cinema 4D directly to what you see here in the preview window for Adobe After Effects. Under the project settings for the Cineware plugin, under camera, you can actually disable this link. So right now this is using the Cinema 4D camera. It's using the camera as defined in my Cinema 4D project. However, I can have multiple cameras and I can then select which one I want. I can also use my comp camera. And the cool thing is that I can actually disconnect these two. If I select my comp camera, which is right now this track 3D camera, I can actually move my camera around and I can view my 3D objects any way I want, disconnected from what is actually defined in the Cinema 4D file. Obviously for this particular scenario that is not what I want, so let's undo that. And I'm also going to set the camera of my Cinema plugin back to the Cinema 4D camera. Yep. Everything is nice and aligned again and properly tracked into my shot just like I want.
Let's get rid of this ugly solid here under the cube and we can probably hide the null object as well. So let's disable the visibility on the null object and on the solid. Hmm, well, you may notice that the solid is still visible here and that's not actually the solid from After Effects. This solid also exists in my Cinema 4D project. So let's hop back to Cinema 4D. And here's my solid. Uh, what I want to do, I can either delete it. Personally, I like to just disable it so it doesn't render. Don't forget to save. Go back to After Effects. And the solid is gone. All that is left is our 3D cube. Let's jump back to Cinema 4D because I quickly want to show you one technique that makes working in Cinema 4D for tracking objects into a scene a whole lot easier. In the Create menu, under this particular tab here, you will find a background object. So let's add a background object into our scene. What I want to do is I'm actually going to assign an image sequence to my background which matches the footage from my After Effects composition. This way I can get the background in my viewport for Cinema 4D to show me the footage that I'm tracking this 3D object into. This is going to make it a whole lot easier to add and work with 3D objects in Cinema 4D and make sure they will fit properly into your final shot. To assign a texture to this background we need to create a material. All the way at the bottom of the Cinema 4D interface you will find the materials and what we want to do is you want to go on create and let's create a new material. I'm just going to double click on the material name and rename this one to background. Then over on the right hand side I will find the attribute manager and with my material selected I will see the attributes for my material. In this material under the color tab I have a texture option and if I click on this I can actually select a texture to be applied to this material. And what I have done I have actually exported my scene from After Effects, the one where I'm walking through the reserve, as individual frames. I'm going to select the very first one of this image sequence and hit open. I'm going to say no to this pop-up which just wants me to copy the first texture to a predefined texture location. No thank you. So now my material has the frames from my footage assigned. Uh, I'm quickly going to hop over into the basic tab and disable the reflectance because it does look a little bit ugly. Now and this is very important, go over into the editor tab and tick the animate preview option in this material because otherwise you're only going to see the first frame of your image sequence and you're not actually going to see your full footage. Finally, back into the color tab and under texture, click on the little texture icon. This is going to bring up the shader for this particular texture. Again, we just need to make sure that the images from our image sequence will properly align with the timing in the Cinema 4D project. For that, jump into the animation tab and at the very bottom you will find the calculated movie start and end frames. Right now this is set to 0, 0 which is incorrect. So at the very bottom just click on calculate and you will see it is 603 frames as an image sequence. That is correct. And also change the timing. I'm not a big fan of exact second. It never really seems to align very well. Let's change this to exact frame. So now we have an animated texture. The last thing we have to do is click and hold on this material and drag it onto our background object. And now if you scrub through your project in Cinema 4D, now this is really awesome because we now have a properly tracked 3D camera and the matching footage in our 3D program where we can add and animate any 3D objects directly into our scene. Adding this animated 3D background makes it really easy to visually see what your final composited scene might look like and it makes it really easy to add and control all the pieces in your 3D scene before you go back into After Effects and composite it all together. Now if we jump back into Adobe After Effects um, and let's go back onto the Cinema 4D layer and set the renderer to final. This doesn't look too bad but the lighting is totally off. The cube does really not fit well into the scene. So let's work on that. So what we want to do is we A want to add a sunlight around about here, just a little bit of a yellowish light casting onto the cube. And we also want the cube to cast a shadow in the same direction as all of the trees in the reserve do. So once again back to Cinema 4D and let's add a light into the scene. Click on the create light menu, hold it down and let's create a new light. Our cube has just gone totally black but that's just because the light is actually inside of the cube. So let's reposition this light just about a little bit to the right and upwards just to about where the sun would be. Yeah that looks about right. We're going to tweak this a little bit more later when we add the shadows. And then in the attribute editor with the light still selected let's make this a little bit of yellowish color just to kind of match up with the rest of the scene. Doesn't have to be too yellow, just a little bit of a tint, just to match all the other little shards of sunlight that you can see in the background of the shot. 
Yep, that looks about right. Let's quickly rename this light to sum. And because we don't have any ambient light in our scene, one side of the cube is totally black and it looks a little bit unnatural. So let's add another light into the scene. Let's call this one ambient. And in the attributes, enable the ambient illumination option. Now, this is a little bit too bright for our cube. So let's bring down the intensity to, uh, it doesn't have to be too much. Maybe we'll go with about 25% or so, just so it's not fully black on one side. And again, let's make this light a little bit yellow. Now, I know this isn't perfect, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. You know, you can always spend as much time as you want on this and tweak it until you're really, really happy with it. Let's just move on to the next thing. Let's save this scene and hop back to After Effects. Yep, and you can now see the lighting on our cube in After Effects. Now, rendering is starting to get a little bit slower, so I am going to change my renderer in the Cinema plugin back over to Draft. Next, and this is going to make a big difference in integrating this 3D object into our scene. Let's add a shadow to the cube to match up with all the shadows that are being cast by all of the trees in the background. So let's jump back to Cinema 4D and let's add a ground plane. Go into the Create Shapes option and select to create a plane. I'm going to call this plane ground and let's make this nice and big to kind of span out and stretch over the entire ground. Cool, let you do. If you now preview render this in Cinema 4D, for that you can actually press Ctrl R. Yep, that looks all right, but the cube doesn't have a shadow and that is because the lights are not yet enabled to cast shadows. So let's select the sunlight, which is the one we want to cast shadows. And in the shadow tab, see how the shadow is set to none? Change this over to be shadow maps soft. Again, let's preview this in Cinema 4D. And you can see our cube now has a shadow. Um, you can also see that the light is badly positioned because this shadow does not align with the direction of the shadows everywhere else in the scene. So let's pick the sunlight and let's move this over a little bit. Let's render this out. Yeah, it's probably a little bit better. I'm still not quite happy. I'm going to move this light away a little bit downwards and across. Yep, that actually looks pretty good. I think the shadow is kind of aligned with the shadows you can see in the background of the shot. Now, the next thing that's going to happen when we save our scene and go back into After Effects, yes, we have a shadow, but our problem is now going to be the fact that we also have this massive ground plane in the scene, which we don't want at all. All we want is just the shadow, but we want the shadow to be placed on our normal footage and we still want to see the 3D cube. Now, this is where things get a little bit more complicated because you will no longer be able to just use a single Cinema 4D layer to achieve this effect you're going to have to use multi-passes. Multi-passes aren't actually scary at all. It really just means that rather than having a single rendered image, you have a large number of rendered images. One is just your diffuse color, one is your shadow layers, one is your reflection, your ambient occlusion, your object buffers. Your rendering is basically getting split up into separate layers and then you can composite them in any way you want inside of Adobe After Effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into Cinema 4D we're going to pop open the render settings and we go to enable the multi-pass option. Now, by default, this will already give you access to quite a large number of different multi-pass layers like diffuse, shadow, reflection, luminance and other things. But one of the passes that is not included by default is an object buffer. And that's what I want to add now. So right click onto multi-pass and select to add an object buffer. I'm going to double click on this new pass and rename it to foreground matte. Now, a lot of people get confused by what an object buffer actually is or why you would want to use one. But if you follow along for just a few more minutes, I guarantee you it'll suddenly make sense. Let's close the render settings, save our scene, and let's go back to After Effects. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename my current Cinema 4D layer to Diffuse. I'm then going to go into the Cinema plugin and I'm going to enable the Cinema 4D multi-pass option. By default, nothing will change, but I'm now going to go set multipass and I am actually going to change this multipass to diffuse. Hit OK. And what you're going to get is you are actually going to get a layer rendered out that only contains the diffuse information of your scene. So all the shadows are gone. The specular lighting is gone as well. This is a fairly flat image and looks a little bit boring and by itself doesn't really do too much. But Let's add another layer for the shadow. So let's select the diffuse layer and duplicate it with Ctrl D. Let's rename this layer to shadow. And let's go into the multipass options for this one and change the multipass over to shadow. 
Now, interesting enough, um, this is all opaque. So this is really your shadow layer. And your shadow layer is really just a grayscale image that contains the shadow information of your scene. Now, by itself, it doesn't do very much, but in After Effects, you can change the blend mode over to Multiply. And you now have an individual layer that controls the shadows in your scene. You could adjust its opacity or apply other effects to it, do all sorts of cool compositing things. Problem is that our diffuse layer still contains this ground plane. It's not just a cube, but remember track mats and what they used for in After Effects? I made a basics tutorial on that years ago and I really hope you watched it because otherwise this next step is not going to make sense. So if you haven't watched it yet, go watch it now because I'm going to explain object buffers next and for that you need to understand what track mats are. So let's go back into Cinema 4D and let's make use of the foreground mat object buffer that we added. Now, an object buffer is really just a black and white render pass and you can determine which of your elements from your Cinema 4D scene are being rendered as white in that object buffer and which ones are black. You can then use that black and white image as a track mat in Adobe After Effects to cut out all of the elements that you don't want to see. I do want to see the cube, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the cube, right click it in my Project Explorer and go Cinema 4D Tags and add a compositing tag. Now these tags allow you to change all sorts of properties on how this cube is being rendered. And what I want to do is I want to go over into the Object Buffer tab, go Enable and make sure your buffer is set to 1. Um, why this is set to 1 is if you go back into the render settings, our foreground mat Object Buffer is set to Group 1. So this cube will render into the foreground mat Object Buffer. Let's save this off and let's go back to Adobe After Effects. And now comes the trick. Let's for now disable the shadow layer and let's duplicate this diffuse layer. Let's call this one foreground mat. Then in the cinema plugin effect under set multipass, let's change this particular layer to use our foreground mat object buffer. Hit OK. And as I said, it is a black and white image where only the elements that we've tagged with the compositing tag and set to render into this object buffer appear as white. This is now great because this is a luma mat that we can use on our diffuse layer to cut the ground out. So on my diffuse layer, go to the track mat option and change this to luma mat. Now all you're left with is the cube. The ground plane is gone because we've cut it out using this object buffer. Now we can also add the shadow pass back in and the shadows will fall onto our actual footage without the ground plane being in the shot. Now, there's two issues with the shadow. For one, it's way too strong, but because it is its own layer, because we're using a multipass, you can just open the opacity and bring that down a little bit. I just want a really soft shadow, just a little bit to integrate the cube a little bit better into the scene. And obviously the other issue is that the shadow is kind of going over the tree stump. You can mask this out. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to go into detail here because it's just gonna consume time and it's not really relevant to this particular tutorial. But now we have a cube in the scene. I think this cube has gotten way too dark, so I'm just going to quickly jump back over into Cinema 4D, select my ambient light, go back to the general tab and let's push this up to make this a little bit brighter because this is starting to look a little bit too dark. Let's save this and jump back into After Effects. Yep, that looks a lot better. Actually, I think I'm going to make the shadow a little bit stronger. Yeah, but that seems all right. So that's actually not a bad 3D integration. Let me quickly rewind my composition and play this whole effect back. Cool, this actually looks pretty good. Now, yes, I know all we have is a cube tracked into a shot of me walking through a reserve, which is not terribly exciting, but this was just a really basic tutorial on how to use the Cineware plugin. We've only just scratched the surface of the capabilities of the Cineware plugin of Cinema 4D and the integration with After Effects, but I do hope that you can realize the possibilities. Using the Cineware plugin to integrate Cinema 4D and After Effects really opens up the toolbox of 3D integration effects. You can add any 3D object imaginable into your scene. You can animate creatures, add all sorts of cool effects and then composite it all together inside of Adobe After Effects. Now one very last comment on the Cineware plugin. If I go into the About options for the Cineware plugin, you can see that I'm currently using version 2.0.16. Now, this version of the Cineware plugin comes with After Effects CC 2015. 
If you happen to have version 2.0.12 of the Cineware plugin, which comes with After Effects CC 2014, you may get some really, really weird render results when you're using multi-pass rendering and different layers to composite together in Adobe After Effects. Unfortunately, that is a known bug with version 2.0.12 of the Cineware plugin. And the only way to get around it is to upgrade your version of After Effects, which will also upgrade your Cineware plugin. And that's all this to it. Now, I am planning on creating some more advanced 3D integration effect tutorials, so keep an eye out for those. I really hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you want to see more cool visual effects and filmmaking tutorials, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And I would also greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. If you want to get in contact or simply stay up to date with what is going on, you can also find and follow me on Facebook, Twitter or on Google+. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.